is A to Z with Mark Zinno, part of Locked On Sports Atlanta, and it starts now. Good afternoon. Welcome to A to Z here on Locked On Sports Atlanta, where today I tell you it's all about timing and opportunity. Welcome in. We are live here on this Friday, still from sunny Fort Stewart. Appreciate you guys adjusting to my ever-changing schedule, but appreciate you guys being with me as always. Give us a follow on Twitter at Locked On ATL. I'm at Mark Zinno, M-A-R-K-Z-I-N-N-O. And certainly appreciate you guys spending this Friday with us. we got a lot to get to here, some possible trade targets for the Hawks. Falcons wrap up OTAs mini camp coming up next week. And we'll start today with the Atlanta Braves, who have now won eight in a row after a 3-1 victory last night and a fantastic column in the athletic by the Braves beat writer Dave O'Brien on the meeting that Brian Snitker had with the Braves that precipitated this eight-game winning streak. Now, uh, the Braves were playing bad, and I was one. Hit the rewind button again because I just like to recount for everybody in case you haven't heard me say this before. But it was the beginning of May, and I remember the show that we had. Um, it was the beginning of May, and people were panicking, and the Braves weren't looking good, and they weren't playing well. And I told everybody to pump the brakes, relax. And I said, look, they have this this series, eight, eight games against, I think it was the Padres, the Brewers, you know, uh, and somebody else, I can't remember who it was. But regardless, you know, they had a chance to get over 500. And they didn't do it. And I said their next best opportunity to get over 500 was this stretch that they're currently in right now leading up to June 15th was the date on the wall. They weren't above 500 by June 15th. That's when I was going to start panicking. But even I started to get a little bit flustered about the way the Braves were playing. And I talked repeatedly over the past couple of weeks about just they didn't look like they were a good baseball team. They weren't playing a good brand of baseball. Even their losses didn't look like there was a team that was in the baseball game, right? Like there was just a lot of things optically that didn't sit well about the Braves. So they lose the first two games at Arizona. And Brian Snicker calls a meeting with the team. And, you know, as it's detailed by Dave O'Brien in The Athletic, this is not a scream and shout rah-rah guy. He's not going to, you know, peel the paint off the walls, kind of yelling um, with his guys. But he sat down with them and had a talk, and they haven't lost since. And this is why I said it's about timing and opportunity. The timing was right for Brian Snitker to give that speech, right? And it was needed and it was necessary. And part of me thinks, well, why don't you do that speech two weeks before that, right? Like maybe that was the timing to do it. But there is a sentiment, and Dave O'Brien reflects this, that you know it was the even keel demeanor that allowed everybody to stay where they needed to stay mentally to be able to fight through the tough times again. Remember this about baseball, guys. It is a slog. It is a long season. Every season is six months, okay? But you don't play every day like you do in baseball. In reality, the football season is six months. August, September, October, November, December, January. I mean, it's it's six months if you're a playoff team. Um, and, and it's the same thing for the NBA. They start in November and they end right now in June. It's a six-month season if you're a deep playoff team. So. Baseball is a little bit different. It's a six-month regular season played every single day. And so there's going to be tons of ups and downs. There's going to be tons of periods where you don't play well and tons of periods where you just feel like you can't lose to anybody. That's just part of the way the game is. They had this meeting in Arizona, and they win eight straight. That was the timing that was needed. The opportunity has been the teams that they've played. And this is exactly what I focused on. After the final win in Arizona, four against the Rockies, two against the A's, four against the Pirates, right? Four against the National, three against the Nationals, rather. Like, this is exactly the teams that you wanted to play. This is the opportunity that they had to get above 500, and they're taking advantage of it. Now, again, in fairness to them, you know, just from a numbers standpoint, look at what the Braves – have done prior to this eight game winning streak. This is a team that was batting 244 and they were averaging 10 strikeouts a game. During this win streak, this is a team now that has bat 291. They got their strikeouts down to eight and a half times a game. Okay. 
They have an OBP of 344 and a slugging of 528. That's not where this team was. Their slash lines were 244, OBP of 310, and a slugging of 424. And as I said, over the last eight games, the numbers dramatically have gone up. 291, 344, 528. That's huge. So they're doing the things that they need to do to be better, and they're taking advantage of bad opponents. In fairness, you could argue that they had chances to play against Cincinnati and Washington earlier this year didn't take advantage of it. They had chances to play against the Cubs. The Texas Rangers didn't take advantage of it. I mean, not everybody has been a high-level team that they played this year. So it's, it's fair to say that this is a team now that has started to play baseball the right way. The numbers back that up. Uh, and they are beating teams that they are supposed to beat, which is super critical because it's the only way that they were going to get above 500 at this point. You can't keep rubbing, running up against the Mets and the Dodgers and, and, and good teams and expect to beat them every single time. Uh, that's just not not reality. Heck, I mean, even the, even the Dodgers got swept by the Pirates. You're going to have bad stretches of baseball over the course of six months. It's just going to happen. They're having a good stretch against bad teams at the right time, and it's certainly benefiting them. So, uh, I, I mean, you start to feel better about where this team is uh, and, and the way that they're hitting the ball. And this is a lineup, again, that has to carry this team. It's not because the pitching isn't good enough, but this is a lineup that's built to score a ton of runs. This is a lineup that's built to match the baseball of 162, and you don't need the high-level pitching you got from Max Fried last night, which you've gotten from Kyle Wright. You know, you're, you should be able to survive the Charlie Morton slow start and the bumps in the road. You know, you should be able to survive the not figuring out who the fifth starter is and eventually setting, settling on Spencer Strider. You should be able to survive all those things and certainly be able to survive until Mike Soroka gets back into the rotation because the lineup is built that way. So very much a a, uh, a thumbs up to the Braves offense for actually showing up and being the Braves offense. All right, coming up next, uh, we're going to flip from offense to defense because that's exactly – what the Atlanta Hawks need. I know it's free agency and they have a little bit of room to, to play with, but trades may be the way to go to get the Hawks to the next level next season. That's coming up next right here on A to Z on Locked On Sports, free on YouTube and wherever you get your podcast. Make sure you search Locked On Sports Atlanta. We'll be right back. 